Today I'm going to share with you the secrets of the SOAS. I'm Carson Boddicker, and I own Boddicker Performance and BoddickerPerformance.com. At BP, we facilitate maximal athletic achievement through personalized application of leading-edge methodologies, all while being delivered with an unrelenting dedication to our athletes. So why do we even need to worry about the SOAS? Well, for those of you involved in the fitness industry, you've undoubtedly heard of the SOAS, and you've probably heard that you should stretch it to help facilitate function of the glutes. Maybe it needs activation because your rectus femoris and your TFL are overworked. Could be some other reasons. However, all the talk about the SOAS is without a doubt well-founded. The SOAS is critical for both performance and health. As you can see, it's critical for the health of the lumbar spine, the hips, and also the knees. So what do we know about the anatomy of the psoas? Well, it inserts on the lesser trochanter of the femur and also on the anterior portion of the transverse processes of the T12 vertebrae all the way down to the L5 vertebrae. So what does it do? And this is critical. There's a lot of hotly debated topics, so over the next several minutes, we'll evaluate the arguments and we'll look at the literature on the function of the psoas. Is it a hip flexor? We'll see if it's a hip rotator. We'll also check to see if it's a hip or a lumbar extensor, a lumbar flexor. Does it contribute to lumbar stability in any way? How does it impact posture? Does it play a role in breathing? Does it couple the upper and lower extremities? The fact of the matter is, the psoas probably does all of it, at least to some degree. So let's evaluate the arguments for the psoas as a hip flexor. The orientation of the muscle, if you see here starting at its insertion at the lesser trochanter, goes up and forward over the iliopectineal ridge, and then proceeds up and back towards the spine. If you look here, it forms a fulcrum on the iliopectineal ridge, serving as a lever to help flex the hip. The psoas itself is positioned anterior to the medial lateral axis of hip flexion, which is yet more evidence for it as a hip flexor. While the moment arm of the psoas is considered sh considerably shorter than the TFL, the rectus femoris, or the sartorius, its large cross-sectional area and size as a muscle makes it a very powerful hip flexor. And lastly, bipedalism brought about a pretty cool change. So most, if not all, quadruped animals have the psoas insert on the lumbar spine and into the hip only. It wasn't until bipedalism came about that this edge on the iliopectineal ridge, this fulcrum by the iliopectineal ridge, was able to make the psoas a hip flexor. So is the psoas a hip flexor? I can say without a doubt it is absolutely a hip flexor. Now, is it a hip rotator? This argument, unlike the hip flexor argument, is a little bit more muddy. This argument is hotly debated and has been for many years in biomechanical and anatomical circles. The problem lies in determining the axis of rotation. So on this image on the left here, you can see that it is a lateral rotator, an external rotator of the hip. But the problem with Mr. Netter's image here is that assumes that the axis of rotation is directly along the shaft of the femur. While it makes sense with the femur in isolation, if you were to wrap a string around the femur and pull it in the direction of the psoas, it would serve as an external rotator. The issue lies, though, that the femoral head is secured into the acetabulum and the labrum covers it up, so it creates a lot less freedom for that movement to occur. 
So, if you look at the image on the right, it shows the axis of rotation potentially through the femoral head. Now, here then, if this is the true axis of rotation, the psoas would be a medial rotator, or an internal rotator of the hip. So which one is it? Well, it's really dependent on hip position. So it's been shown that in the extremely flexed position, so above 90 degrees of flexion, it is definitely a lateral rotator. However, it's not very powerful of a lateral rotator. As the hip drifts towards extension, it becomes less and less of a lateral rotator, but at a neutral hip, it's a slightly biased towards external rotation. The EMG studies on psoas in external rotation show that externally rotating the hips leads to slightly more psoas activity than internally rotating. However, neither EMG electrical activity is a quick or equal to 50% of the EMG activity that's created with hip flexion. So, is the psoas a hip rotator? If it is at all, it's probably negligible.